So in this video, I'm going to quickly explain how a new species can be formed and a couple of different theories on how that happens. So first of all, when we form a new species, it is called speciation. And there's two different ways that this can happen that we're going to talk about in this video. So the first one is gradualism, and the second one is punctuated equilibrium. But first I wanted to just remind you what a species is. So a species is something that can only, um, so a group of organisms that can reproduce together, okay, their actual reproductive structures do fit together, and when they form offspring, those offspring offspring are actual viable offspring, which means that they're fertile, which means that they're, they can actually have babies. So if, for example, two populations are separated for long enough, mutations can happen over time in their DNA, and because they're not breeding with one another because they're two separate populations, um, they can change so much over time they're in their DNA that when they come back together, um, if they do try to reproduce, this is where they maybe wouldn't be able to produce offspring that can reproduce because the DNA in the cells maybe isn't the right number. Okay, or maybe they've actually had so many mutations happen that their bodies look totally different, which means that their reproductive structures maybe don't fit anymore and they're no longer the same species. Okay, that's what speciation is. And this is kind of what the two different types of speciation looks like. It uses different words um, than what I'm going to use later, so I'm going to just kind of skip over this picture because I'm going to explain it in a different way later. So. If we're looking at the difference between barriers that can separate populations, which causes speciation, um, we can have geographical barriers. Okay, geographical barriers would be things like mountains or a river or actually like two different continents, so an ocean separating two different continents. So that's a geographical barrier. So basically just physically preventing two populations from interbreeding by separating them by a river or some sort of geographical landmark. A biological barrier is a little bit different. Okay, so a biological barrier is still going to prevent two populations from interbreeding, but it's not going to physically prevent them. By, they might actually be still in the same space, in the same area, but a biological barrier would be something like a mating ritual um, that is done by a certain group of the population. So, for example, we have the howler monkey on here. So certain, like, calls that, like, birds do for example or like monkeys do or um just sit, certain mating rituals like dances that that birds do or like sounds that they make that would stop a group of the population from mating with them because they don't find that appealing so basically it's not actually separating the species in two separate areas it's just like Part of the group does this weird mating ritual and the other part doesn't. So then they stop breeding with each other, even though they're right next to each other. They're just like, I don't find that appealing. I just am not a fan of that. So I am not going to breed with you. I'm going to put on a couple of videos on Classroom to kind of go along with the idea of biological barriers. So like some of the dances that I've seen on different organisms um, or like different things like that. I'm going to put a couple of videos on um, classroom so you guys can watch those um, to kind of go along with this slide. I would normally just show you in class. So the way that speciation can occur, so remember speciation is just the forming of a new species, um, can occur in two different ways which is kind of the whole general idea of what we need to get out of this video. So punctuated e equilibrium versus gradualism. So the first one, gradualism, is just as the name says, it's like a slow change over time. So this is like basically small little changes that add up to a big change. So basically what that means is 
small little mutations are happening in the species, causing them to slowly, slowly, slowly change over many generations. So my example is in giraffes. Okay, we know that um, many, many thousands of years ago, giraffes did not have long necks. So they looked a little bit more like a horse. And I'm just going to draw a picture, you guys, to draw this diagram with me. So I'm just going to draw the body of a bunch of giraffes so that I can add in their neck. This is not going to look nice. Try to make this look a little bit nicer on your screen, or I guess your page. So basically, what gradualism is saying is that how giraffes went from this short neck to this really long neck, okay, is through really, really small changes. So this giraffe had a really short neck, but he really wanted to reach the tall leaf. So over time, he kind of stretched and stretched and stretched. And then his baby, because he was stretching out his neck, was born with a slightly longer neck. Okay, same thing. This guy still wasn't really happy with the neck size. So he stretched and stretched and stretched. And his baby was then born with a slightly longer neck. And then same thing happens over time. This guy stretches out his neck and his baby is born with a slightly longer neck. And it just keeps happening over and over and over, over many generations so that we see this gradual increase in neck size. Okay, this is called gradualism. And it's very similar to what Lamarck was saying, which we now know is not super, super accurate. Okay? We now know um, that if an organism tried to stretch their neck out, okay, that wouldn't necessarily be passed on to their child because only um, genetic traits are passed on to children. Okay, not necessarily acquired traits in the lifetime. So a giraffe stretching out his neck, he's not going to have a baby with a longer neck because he stretched his neck out. Okay, it would happen from genetic mutations. So punctuated equilibrium is a little bit different. So these are um, really large changes due to mutations. Um, sorry, can't seem to figure out how to spell that. So large changes happening and staying around for a longer period of time. So if you look at the name punctuated equilibrium, punctuated as in, it reminds me of punctuation, and punctuation is like at you put at the end of the sentence. So it's going to be like small little segments of things. And then equilibrium means kind of like a balance. So how do these like sentence fragments that we have breaked up, broken into certain sections, how do they actually equal um, this kind of balance in nature? So how this works, again, I'm going to draw a bunch of giraffe bodies. Remember, we're going from a small neck giraffe to eventually a really long neck giraffe. So fill in a couple of giraffe bodies. Obviously you're gonna make yours look way nicer than mine. Mine look crazy. Oh my goodness. Need to get better at drawing apparently. So basically what would happen is giraffes would be born for thousands of years with the same size neck. Okay, and maybe one giraffe would be born with a really, really, really long neck. So this giraffe has a slightly longer neck and all of the other giraffes, because their neck is shorter, are like, look at this weirdo. He's got a super long neck, like what a loser. Um, but then there's a drought and all of a sudden there's this pressure on the ecosystem and super high competition to get food. So then all of the other long, um, short necked giraffes are looking at this really long neck freak that they used to make fun of and they're like, oh, this guy can get food actually now really well. So all the lady giraffes are like, damn, I want to have babies with this guy. So when they have babies with this guy, his genetic mutation that he had when he was born 
gets passed on to their offspring, and this happens for many, many, many generations. Okay, and then another day, another giraffe is born with a slightly longer neck than this one that was previously made fun of thousands of years before, okay, or hundreds of years before. And again, all of the other giraffes in the area kind of looked like this size. And they're like, wow, this guy's like freakishly tall. Like what's going on with his neck? It's just crazy long. I don't understand. So again, they're kind of picking on him and whatnot. And then a flood happens and it's going to kill all of the tree leaves because it wipes out um, all of the tree leaves on the bottom. So it's easier to get food from the top of the tree. I'm hypothetically making up scenarios. So this long neck giraffe, which is longer than the previous, um, again, is having an easier time getting food. And all the other giraffes are like, okay, we were making fun of this guy, but now we kind of feel bad because he's actually really good at getting food. All the lady giraffes are like, damn, um, we want to have babies with this guy. So again, for a really long time, we have that kind of size of neck and it just kind of randomly changes over time causing it to have this increase in segments so the punctuated equilibrium would be like this is a sentence blah 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 and then we put a period and then this is another sentence and another period and this is another sentence and an exclamation mark and this is another sentence and a question mark or whatever okay punctuated equilibrium so this is kind of more what darwin felt happens which we now know is a little bit more accurate to how genetics um, plays a role in evolution. So the difference between the two would be like this. Punctuated equilibrium is like stairs, um, whereas gradualism is more like a ramp. Okay, These are happening from genetic mutations okay, that are happening in a baby, and then it just happens to be an advantage because of some sort of change in the population, whereas this one is kind of just gradually stretching out the neck of the giraffe. So that's kind of the two different ways that speciation can occur, which you guys have to remember um, for later. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll talk to you guys later and have a good one. Bye.